Now listen to this. I want to say something very important. Abraham's wife is there, Sarah, and the promise is there of a child. If he looks at Sarah, you think he'll become strengthened in faith? If he looked at a 90-year-old woman, that's very difficult, isn't it? Already he fell down laughing. So, he is surely not going to get strengthened by faith, in faith by looking at Sarah. It's an impossible situation, hopeless. The more he looks at her, the more he will be discouraged only. If he looks at the promise, you see, some people don't understand this part. Because they say, look at the promise, look at the... But if you look at the promise also, you'll get discouraged. Because the promise is too incredible. So, un so unbelievable. I mean, if you tell a 90-year-old woman and a 99-year-old man that a child is going to be, that is itself too much. But you're saying 2,000 years ago, Jesus is going to be born. And then after that, Gentiles are going, when is it going, all going to happen? It's too incredible. Unbelievable. So, to look at Sarah and himself, whose body was now considered dead, to look at their, both their bodies, it would have been discouraging. To look at the promise of God, it will be more disheartening because it's too much to believe. Impossible to believe. Incredible. Then what to look at? And it tells us exactly what he looked at. What did he look at? It says, He became fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. That means, he was looking not at the promise, but the promiser. Look at the one who promised. What is the issue here, when he looked at the one who promised? The question in his mind was, Let's look, let me look at him. Is he able to do what he has promised? Is he powerful enough? Does he have the power to do it? In other words, he was meditating on God's power, meditating on God's ability, meditating on the fact of God's omnipotence, that he is all powerful. The more he meditated on God's omnipotence, that he is all powerful, that nothing is impossible with God, the more he spent time looking at God, and how great he is, how wonderful he is. How omnipotent he is. There is nothing in the world that he cannot do. The more he became fully convinced. I'm saying this to people who say, how do I become fully convinced of the promises of God? How do I develop in faith? How do I grow in faith? I'm telling you, more than looking at the promise, look at the God who promised and look at his attributes because the more you meditate upon who God is and how good he is, how great he is, that he is almighty. Then if you look at the promises then you say, oh, he is the one that promised. I know him. I know how great he is. I know, I know how good he is. He has never lied before. He is holy. He is not running a chit fund. He's not going to run away with my money. <laughs> He's not going to cheat me. He's not going to promise me something and disappear tomorrow. He's a good God. He's a holy, righteous God. He's almighty God. He's a powerful God. What he says, he can do. When I understand him, look at him and meditate upon him and then look at the promise. Now the promise looks possible. Before it looked impossible, now it looks possible. Then look at the wife, if that's your problem. <laughs> or your husband, if, if that's your problem. Or your finances, if that's your problem. Your health, if that's your problem. Your whatever problem you have. Once you have meditated upon God, then you look at the promise, it will look different. Then you look at the problem, the problem will look small. Mountains can be moved by that kind of faith. That faith will move mountains. Mountain, you got to move, oh mountain. You got to move, I speak right now in the name of Jesus. I made up my mind.